There are times when you might need to add data to your document, and a table is one way to organize information and present it in an easy-to-read format. Although many of the formatting capabilities are less sophisticated than those found in commercial word processors, Google Documents, that comes as part of the Google Docs suite, has table tools that are more than adequate for most users. You are using Google Docs to write an annual report, and you need to include a list of employees. To keep them organized and easy to reference, you'll put them into a table and then add formatting to it. The Google Docs All Items list provides a quick overview of our existing files. We've entered some text into the school annual report file, but now we need to insert a table into it. Let's open it to get started. Our document is coming along nicely, but we want to add a table to it to make some information easier to understand. First, let's scroll so we can see the end of what we have so far. We will use the Table menu to add a table to our document, but first we need to move the insertion point to the end of the document. To do this, we can click below the last line of text. This is where we want the table to appear. Inserting a table takes a few simple steps. First, we'll open the Table menu. The final step is to define the table size. Tables are made up of cells, rows, and columns. The grid we see allows us to establish the size of the table. Our table will consist of five columns and four rows, so we need to click the cell where this column and this row intersect. The cells in the first row will make up the header row, so let's add the heading for the first column. When we added the table, the first cell was selected, so we can simply begin typing. To move between cells in a table, we can click within the cells, press an arrow key, or use the tab key. Let's move to the next cell to the right by pressing tab. Moving around in the table is straightforward. So we'll go ahead and add the remaining column headings and table data for you when you click Next. Once you have inserted a table into a document, there are several ways you can alter it. For example, you can add or delete rows and columns if your table grows beyond what you first selected. We left out a row in this table, so let's add it just below the header row. We can use the shortcut menu which contains many of the same commands as the table menu to insert the new row. We can easily insert or delete rows and columns using the shortcut menu. We could also delete the entire table, but for now, let's just add a row below the row we selected. Notice how row 2 shifted down to become row 3. Now we can add data to this new row. When you click Next, we'll do it for you. We can also resize rows and columns by clicking and dragging the border we want to modify. Since row 1 contains column headers, let's make it a little larger. To increase it, we need to click the bottom border of the first row and then drag it about a quarter of an inch down. We've added a green line on the screen to guide you. Now that we've resized row 1, we can make our headings stand out more. The most common way is to make the header row bold. We can use the text tools to format the text within the cells, just as we would if this were a normal paragraph. First, we need to select the text in the first row. With the text selected, we can add the bold formatting using the bold button on the toolbar. 
See how easily that formatted the text? Let's make a few more changes to our table. We can access the table's properties through the table menu. In the Table Properties dialog box, we can make several formatting changes to our table. We can change the table border width or color, modify the height and width of the columns and rows, or make changes to the cell's background color, vertical alignment, or cell padding. Let's change our table border color from black to red. To do so, we need to click the currently selected color. There are several shades of red in the color picker. We want to use a dark red, so let's choose the sixth color in the second row, a nice maroon. The final formatting change we will make is to change the background color of the cells in the header row from white to gray. They are still selected, so we can click the Cell tab in the Table Properties dialog box to make our change to these cells. To view the colors, we'll again click the current white color to the right of the background color. There are several shades of gray, but we want to be subtle, so let's use the second color in the first row. Now let's accept these changes and see what our table looks like. Notice how the different background color makes the header row stand out, and the border sets off the table nicely. Now that you know how to insert and format a table, you have some of the skills you need to produce a professional-looking document using Google Docs.